Welcome to the Great Things LLC podcast. I'm your host, Josh Meter. All right, friends, uh, welcome back. It is 2021 and I'm back on my podcast after a little bit of break. Uh, I am excited to uh, introduce the guest today. Uh, he's been a friend for a couple of years and happens to have created one of the most life-changing products in my life. So I'd like to welcome uh, Shane Stair. Uh, he is with uh, Journeyman Hammocks and uh, we're going to go into the story. So Shane, uh, you and your partner Kim and I have been friends for a couple of years. I know you have traveled and you're an absolute people person. And I also know you don't shy away from a challenge or an opportunity to just jump headfirst into the unknown. So I know, just share, I mean, you've traveled across the country multiple times. You've done it in vans. You've done it on motorcycles. I mean, you've been everywhere. <laughs> it's been a good time. So the traveling across the country part is, was really important to me. And it started out with my daughter, actually, when she, she was getting ready to graduate high school. And we had talked about doing this for a while. And, you know, she was getting older. The end of high school was coming near. She was going to have a lot of different, you know, things vying for her time when she graduated high school. And so the, her senior year, it was like, well, this is, we do it now or never. So we talked about planning it and we talked about planning it for quite a while, but we never did. The biggest, cl the closest thing we did to planning is we bought a van, we got an Atlas and it was the day of our departure that we decided, well, I guess we're gonna follow, we're gonna follow 70, we're gonna follow 80, we're gonna follow 90, what route are we gonna take across the country? That's as much planning as we did. Now, fortunately, Tyler had gotten, I, I taught her how to uh, read and navigate by map pretty well. I still wasn't, um, this was around, what, this is like 2010, uh, maybe? I'm yeah. not sure. I'll have to, have to well go before back. good cell phone navigation and a well, little bit of GPS. And I didn't trust it, right? I still I hadn't really, wasn't really trusting the GPS too much. And, you know, the map was still the way to go. And it was important that Tyler had that skill set too. So we do this. We set up this trip. It's fantastic. We, our very first night overnight in the van wasn't the best. We, we picked a kind of a crappy location, you know, it was sort of a, it, it just, we hadn't figured, hadn't gotten into our groove yet, but before too long, we were finding wonderful places to set up. Uh, the trip was a blast. We traveled all the way across um, through the Midwest, Colorado, into Utah, passing all the way through to Cal to well, up into Oregon, and then we took one down through California uh, before Tyler ended up at her final stop, which was in San Diego at a family's place. Now she flew back from San Diego, which afforded me the opportunity to go solo in the van back across. And I think it was, it was there that it really clicked for me because now here I am by myself. This is, this is a long trip cross country by myself. And I end up meeting all these interesting people, right? Because I'm not staying in hotels or, or anything like that. I've got my van, I'm self-contained, but I'm going to cool spots and I'm looking for campsites that when I wake up in the morning, it's going to be a beautiful experience. It's going to really help me set the pace for the day. Um, and as a result, I'm running into other people who are doing similar things, people from all over the world, folks. I mean, I had not, I had no frame of re reference. I didn't know what to expect, but you know, if I thought, you know, when I thought it would be cool to set up, find a wild hot springs out in the middle of the desert, and set up camp, I thought, you know, maybe I'll be by myself out here in the middle of the desert. Oftentimes I was, sometimes I wasn't. And those experiences with the people who were there really helped shape uh, my, my love for it, you know. Yeah. It's amazing how if people haven't had an opportunity to do that cross country drive, uh, it is an experience. We're so used to the convenience. You hop on a plane, you get to your destination, you get a thing. But there is so much in those quiet times, those long stretches, and the people you meet along the road are some of the most you know impactful and meaningful connections. So uh, for those of you who haven't done it, I would definitely suggest make a trip. And I love how you guys plan. That's kind of how I plan. I have a I have a departure date. I have a relatively firm return date, and I have some sort of idea in between. And really leaving it open to kind of the mystery and just to trust that you're going to be taken care of is great. And so that spurred a lot of travel. And I know you've been across the country on on bikes and camped out of bike on motorcycles and different vehicles and. Uh, 
there's too many stories to go into and they're all great stories people if you get a chance you'll probably see shane out there sit down with them uh you will not stop laughing and you will have a, a great experience there but let's fast forward a little bit so now you're doing some product engineering and you've done some some contract work you've done some of your own and now the hammock how does the hammock come come to the forefront and how has it developed since then well you know the, the hammock story is pretty pretty interesting so uh, it was i'd set up that product i'd set up a product design company called journeyman products that's how it all started and i had a cross-country tour that it was based on and at this point i had picked up my i uh, picked up a, a nice bmw motorcycle and i was traveling across the country, hitting a series of events. Um, and I didn't want to carry a lot of gear with me. And I also wanted to be comfortable. So I had to think a lot about what my camp situation was going to be. Because on a motorcycle, you know, you can carry a fair amount of gear, but still pretty limited compared to the van, right? And, and another factor came into play is that I don't like to sleep on the ground. It's uncomfortable, okay? There are a lot of different issues with tent camping. Um, it's dirty. Uh, get wet. And most, most important, it's just hard on, it was hard on my back. And so that's how I discovered hammock camping. So on that first trip, I was actually going to, you know, I was, I was promoting journeyman products. And at the same time, I didn't even realize what I was doing exactly, but I was, I, I had started with this basic hammock camp kit that I had assembled from, you know, a motley crew of pieces. And I was refining it as I went. And I was doing that to see, suit my own needs. I wasn't really thinking about it too much. I was focused on this other thing. I was going to, I was going to do these other things at these other events. Well, by the time, you know, I, I got to the furthest point that I was traveling in the country, which was over in Arizona, I had really gotten this thing down and I had discovered a lot of things that weren't available or that weren't good. And, um, I had a pretty good setup. And when I got to that event, people started talking to me about it and they were asking me questions and they were, you know, curious about how I was traveling by motorcycle and how, you know, how my hammock camp, you know, developed the way it did, because it was a little different than everybody else's. And so that got me thinking, this is, this is something, you know, it's a good conversation piece. People really like this. And I just kept making it better and better. And people continued to ask me about it now. And so it occurred to me, this works really well for me. And people seem to like it. I should do something with this. This is this is a product that I could offer to people and help get people into a more comfortable camping situation so they can travel the way that they want to do as well. You know, not everybody wants to travel by motorcycle. Some people want to travel out of the back of a car. Some people, you know, have different methods of, of their conveyance. But this hammock camp can be taken on any of them because it's compact. It has all the feature the features that you need to be comfortable, um, and it's all you know. It's all reasonably priced. It's it's a wonderful thing, right. and it gets people up off the ground, you know, up off of that hard ground into a nice, supported, comfortable, warm environment where you can just rest and relax. And you know, that's the that's the best thing and the worst thing about the hammock camp experience, right? I mean, it's so comfortable that it's hard to get out of. I, I hear you. And uh, I, where are you exposed me to the uh, um, the hammock camp was, uh, you know, we were at a, a festival and you were doing a demonstration on it. Now, this is fast forwarded a couple of years. And I'm, I've been an active camper and, you know, I've tent camped. I've gone all over. I've been close to the Arctic Circle. I've been all around. And you're right. Uh, tent camping has its advantages and disadvantages, more disadvantages. And in the hard ground, you know, even the most experienced campers, sometimes you set it up in the wrong place and you don't see the water run off. Or, and uh, you, you did your demonstration and I tried it out and I bought a, a kit right on the spot because I'm like, oh my God, this is, I can tell this, it was great, it was comfortable. But the, the ease and the convenience in the first night I slept in it, I'm like, I am never, ever sleeping on the ground again it was the best sleep and people don't think about that because they you know hammocks typically they think bananas and that's not how and we'll get into a little bit of why it works so well but what i was really impressed with was the absolute thoroughness and thoughtfulness of every tiny little component in there so i mean it really shows that it wasn't put together by someone behind a desk. It was put together in the field and it, it developed out of a natural usage and rhythm. So 
Um, let's go into, let's talk a little bit about the hammock specific, why it is so different. Cause there's a lot of hammocks you can see out there, but yours does a couple things. So why don't we go through some of the components um, of what your hammock brings to the camping experience? Okay, sure. So to have a good hammock camp, you need three things. Okay. You need the, the hammock body itself, the bed you want in some sort of insulation layer below you, and then you need a shelter above. Those are the three major components of, of a hammock camp. And that can be accomplished in a myriad of ways. But having a, a base kit where you can try it out and get comfortable and have a solid first experience from the beginning, that was the goal, right? When I was, you know, on that first that first motorcycle trip, when I really started to develop the hammock camp, I went through uh, uh, all kinds of different iterations. I tried I tried all kinds of things. I tried sleeping pads inside the hammock. I tried uh, makeshift under quilts. I tried different types of tarps for the shelter system. Um, I tried using bug nets, no bug nets, uh, ridge lines, no ridge lines. I tried. I mean, I tried all kinds of things, and over successive trips, I continued to experiment. I continued to refine and I came and I finally settled on a, a system that is that meets you know 99% of the criteria that, that I needed and that I think most people would need for the kind of, for, you know, for traveling. So it's, for those that aren't, aren't watching here on YouTube and are joining us on the podcast, um, I'd like to kind of direct from the, the setup of the camp hammock, because, and we can go through each of the components because there's so much thought in it. I mean, one, not only is it incredibly comfortable and lightweight, but it takes literally five minutes to set up. One of the first things I noticed was the ease of setup from a location, because it's, I think you said it's like a minimum of 13 feet distance up to 20 something. If you have two trees or two poles with this wide distance, even the thoughtfulness of the strapping systems you're using are so quick release and they hook onto the hammock. And then you have this hammock that isn't affected by the distance of the anchor points because the ridge line. So I want to have you talk a little bit about explain what the ridge line and why that works. And for those that might not be into the hammock camping yet, uh, a little bit about the under quilt and why uh, an uninsulated, no underquilt hammock you can't sleep on because you're actually, you know, exposed to temperature change and hypothermia. So, you know, starting from the trees in, let's kind of just walk through how this system works. All right. Sure. Sure. All right. That sounds good. You know, the best thing, and I would recommend everybody who can to come to an event and have a live demonstration. That way you can see everything in action. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can experience it. Most places I try to set up um, a situation where there's an overnight option. So you can actually sleep in it for a night and try it for yourself and see if it's really the right thing for you. But when we talk about it, there's there's all kinds of, of features that come into play. And, and Josh, you're 100% right. Having having the right setup every time is is critical. But having the right trees or the right distance or the whatever your anchor points are going to be, they're not always going to be perfect every time. So what I started with is a uh, suspension system, okay? That's the part that connects to the anchors and to, then to the hammock that is on a slide, all right? Some, there, there are different kinds of suspension out there. There are daisy chain loops, there are ropes and things like that. And they all have their pros and their cons. But the slide system gives you an infinite level of adjustment. Is from as, as tight as you can get to the max to uh, you know a distance away, and the hammock the hammock itself is about 12 feet long. So you really don't want anything. I, I say the ideal distance is about 16 feet between. Okay, but you can go anywhere from 13 to you know 20 or 20 feet or so based on the the length of the straps. So you've got some variability there that you can work with. Now the hammock itself, for those of you who, who you know, when you think of a hammock, you think of like a, a backyard hammock that's a, a, a mesh, you know, rope style, or if you think, or if you're maybe you're familiar with the Eno style hammock that is a parachute material that's, you know, real simple. Those kinds of hammocks, when you set them up, how, how much sag they have or how tight they are is based on your suspension system. And that can be a problem, especially if you're dealing with this variability in trees, because if you, you don't want your hammock pulled too tight, 
because then it's unstable, you know, and, and you have a tendency to, to not, well, just, it's just not very safe. And you don't want it to be super loose either, because then you end up being scrunched in a ball or your, you know, your butt scraping the ground. So what we do with the journeyman hammock is we include a, what's called a ridge line. All right. And the ridge line is a structural element. So what that allows us to do is when we put up the hammock straps and the suspension straps and we tighten them up, it doesn't tighten the hammock body itself. It tightens the ridge line. And so every time you set up the hammock, regardless of the distance of the trees, the hammock body itself is going to be exactly the same. That way you're ensured to have a nice quality good night's rest. And by doing that, by controlling the distance of the hammock, uh, the sway of the hammock, you've been able to really engineer how, um, how to how it stays in the same form and what people I, I, until the, you're right when they see you at an event and can actually experience it people think of hammock like is a curved surface and you're sleeping like a banana but what i've found in what you've you've shown me is when you sleep at an angle and it stretches the material to where it's a, a flatter sleeping surface to the mm -hmm. point that i've even been able to sleep on my side uh, comfortably and you you don't get that sway of a typical hammock Right. Yeah, that's critical. You're right. You're absolutely right. Again, the a, a lot of people, right, they think about that. And that's just uh, their experience. You know, nobody, nobody was there to show them how to how to do it right. But if you if you just instead of running with the, the, you know, the length of the hammock, if you just kick your head over to the side and your feet over to the opposite side, get yourself that diagonal lay, it really allows you to lay flat. And so that you can do that, you can pretty much sleep in any position except for maybe on your stomach, you know, it's, it's not quite there, but on your side, you can roll around. I move around a lot in my sleep and I really appreciate being able to, to be at that angle or to lay on my side or to pull my legs in or whatever I need to do. Um, and it really opens up the hammock too. It gives you, there's a lot more space than, than what it might originally, you know, at first seen. Yeah, I found it extraordinarily comfortable. In fact, like some of my best night's sleep. Now I keep it in my trunk with me anywhere I go. And if I have the choice, I'm sleeping in the trees rather than on someone's couch. Um, a good so friend of mine, Josh, lives over um, east of here. And I, I went to visit him. Uh, he just moved into a new place. And he has this sort of like annex on the back of his garage. And uh, he was like, if you want to sleep in there, that would, you know, you're perfectly welcome to do that when I went to visit. And I was like, all right, that's great. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, cool. Come on over, bring your hammock kit. And I was like, well, you have me sleeping inside. And he's like, yeah, I put up some anchor points, man. You can set up your hammock and do the whole thing. And I was like, man, you know me well. You know? Oh, now that's a good, <laughs> good friend. Yes. So once you get in the, uh, the hammock system, um, one of the other benefits is the ridge line creates a, a, a top point. So there is a 360 degree bug net uh, that's really easy to get in and out of. So you're, you're insect free. But one of the things, uh, and we'll move on to the under quilt and why that's so important. Um, I've been in your, your hammock from the 80s and 90s down into the 30s and I've been comfortable. So okay. in addition to the ability to lay flat um, and and the ridge line does create the structure to hold up the 360 degree zipping bug net, which you can pull in or out, which is fantastic. I love that. Uh, there's even a, the thoughtfulness, and this is why I love the design. You even have a pocket that you can hold your glasses or a flashlight on the ridge line. So everything's really thoughtful in the way it's uh, laid out. But the, the comfort comes into uh, effect because of the material and the underquilting. And I've been in your hammock, hammock from the 80s and 90s down into the 30s. And I've been comfortable with the, um, with the right uh, layering. So why is it so different? And what, what do you do with, what is an underquilt that makes all the difference in hammock camping? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you hit on a couple good good features there, Josh. The, the bug net, you know, it's, it completely zips off. It has its own pocket it can store in, or you can leave it on either way. And the bug net actually serves two purposes too. You know, it, it obviously it helps keep bugs out, but it also, um, because of the mesh, also helps trap a little bit of extra heat inside, which is which is a nice feature. Um, the material of the hammock is a real nice uh, soft ripstop nylon, and it's it's lightweight. It's it's got good support. It doesn't you know have a lot of stretch to it. So when you were you're in it, it feels very supportive, right? But it's still soft and. Um, I dare say a little luxurious <laughs> and I would agree hundred percent. Yeah. So with, 
so and that's all good by itself right the under quilt is really a key component because what happens is is if you need some sort of insulation up for your backside if you don't have that the thin material of the hammock isn't enough to keep you warm but if you're going to sleep in it overnight if you're going to get you know be serious about camping in a hammock it's it, it's uncomfortable. You get that the air, even if it's a, even if it's not windy, the air is just moving underneath you creates that convection and it, it will make you cold, even though, even if it's 90 degrees out at night, if you're down in Louisiana somewhere, okay, or, you know, on the, the fringes of uh, Texas or something like that, it's, it's still going to make it, you're still going to lose that body heat. So the under quilt provides that layer of insulation that just traps that warm pocket. And it's you're right. I mean, you say 80 to 90 degrees. I've been I've used it in some really warm weather. And people ask me, they say, well, if it's really hot out, would you use the underquilt? And the answer is always yes, always, because it doesn't matter how warm it is. You got to keep that pocket of air that cocoons you. And it's and on keeps, that pocket of air. I think that that's a key differential because a lot of people will say, OK, well, I could just put a sleeping pad down on the bottom. But the underquilt actually has a few inches of space, so it's a it's a quilted material, and that that air is what's doing the insulation, right? Right. Yep. You, if you you anything, if you put a sleeping bag or a sleeping pad inside your hammock, the sleeping pad the sleeping bag is going to compress, and when it compresses, it loses its insulation value, most of its insulation value. Whereas with the underquilt, it hangs down below and it lofts, right? It gives you that nice pocket that is trapped, that traps it in there and it doesn't go anywhere. That's what keeps you warm. Having a sleeping pad inside the hammock is a different approach and um, it just doesn't work out very well. Sleeping pads aren't designed for hammocks. They squirm around. If you move in your sleep, they move and it, it just, it, it doesn't support well, right. you know? Yeah. And that's a key, key component, like you said, because a lot of different people will try that. They're like, oh, I'm a cold in the bottom, so I'll throw in a pad. Well, it's not the same. And as you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, compression of a sleeping bag, they lose all their thermal insulation. So mm -hmm. the and, and I, you're, the way you described it, the experience was the same as I had. The heat didn't matter. You know, it just kept it kept it at a nice temperature. And I wouldn't I don't see any reason why to take that off. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, for the. Uh, you know, like with the with the camp, we do it is you can remove it like in the if you needed to clean it or something like that, you could take it off, but it's integrated into the whole system. And that is one of the things that makes uh, one of the key differences in our system than from other people's system is that the whole the whole hammock and the under quilt, it, the ridge line, it's all set up. It all fits together. The whole thing stuffs into a stuff sack. So whenever you go to set up, you just set that you just set up the entire bed. The whole thing is all ready to go. There's not, there's not a lot of fussing around with setting up a hammock and then setting a ridge line and then separately connecting an under quilt. You don't have to do any of that. It's already set up for you just right out of the bag. It, I can't say enough good about it. Um, and, and that kind of leads on to the other things like you really have thought of everything through this. So even the tarping system. So a lot of people think, you know, the A-frame tarp. Well, you have the ability to close the end. So I've slept in weather where it's blowing sideways and water doesn't get in. We'll talk a little bit about that. Even the lightweight uh, stakes that you have included, they are, they're so easy to use. All the lines, all the guidelines are, are there. They're in the kit, they're ready to go. They're pre-measured. And I love the fact that you have the ones with the high visibility reflective gear. So when you're coming back at night, you're not tripping over them. So. Uh, there's just so many things until you get it, but the thoughtfulness of that is um, there. So let's talk a little bit about the canopy because, you know, it creates a uh, great cover. You can close it. And you've also shown me that you can, uh, in summer nights, even set it up as an awning with a couple poles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shelter itself is is a, is a wonderful part of the whole thing. And it can be used to stand alone. You know, you it has its own suspension system. And, and that was also key too. There's a couple different iterations where the shelter system was integrated with the hammock. And that has certain applications. But a lot of times when I would find myself uh, traveling, you know, the weather, I can't control the weather. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's beautiful. Sometimes it's raining. And so if I have to set up in the camp when it's, when it's wet, what I don't want to do is I don't want to set up my bed and then set the shelter up over top of that because my bed's getting wet the whole time. The, kept the, the suspension system for the shelter separate. 
the, the entire shelter can be set up and it can be set up with the ends open so that you know you get the airflow if it's going to be a warmer breezy night if it's going to be stormy and you want a little more protection you can close in each end uh, they're called doors so the the shelter has doors and if it's going to be really stormy you can close in both ends and buckle it up really tight there are the anchors to the ground the guy lines that attach to the anchors are all pre-cut to, so that you don't have a lot of extra slack laying around or have to do anything crazy. You just, you get set up, you set your anchors, you attach, you adjust, and you're good to go. It's, it's quick, it's painless. The, I've tried to take most of the thinking out of it for, uh, for you, you know? The shelter itself is uh, waterproof, it's lightweight, it packs small, and it's colored green. And I picked the color green because I'm outside sleep if i'm if you're choosing to sleep outside the story i tell myself is you're probably a lot like me i'm sleeping outside because i want to be out in nature i want to be experiencing the weather i want to feel the air i want to notice the temperature changes i want to wake up and i want to see trees or whatever the landscape is around me and so the green shelter is the right color for most places uh, most places, especially here on the East Coast, it does blend in and that element is nice, you know, so it doesn't disturb, you know, other people's experience of the outdoors. But when when you wake up inside of that shelter and, you know, the morning sun is starting to come in and it illuminates that fabric, it just feels natural. It feels good. It, it's, it's invigorating. It gets me excited about getting out and getting started on whatever exciting thing I'm going to do for that day, whatever the adventure will be. But then if you have a set of poles, you can actually set up what they call what we call porch mode. And uh, I like I like porch mode because I can put a couple chairs, a small table. It's an inviting, uh, inviting place at like a festival or something like that for people to come over and chat. That's nice. And uh, the final thing on on your your product line is you have the adventure kit, which just takes it a little bit further. I'll I'll let you describe the kit and then I'll describe my experience with it because you gave me some great uh, tips on how to use it and what I found uh, really helpful with the the adventure kit. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the standard journeyman hammock camp comes with everything you need. It comes with the the hammock bed with the integrated under quilt and bug net and also the shelter and all the guy lines, all the anchors, the suspension systems, everything you need. The adventure kit is the next step up. So it includes the journeyman hammock camp, but it also comes in this convenient 35 liter dry bag. It's heavy duty. It fits everything. It fits the entire camp in with room to spare. So now you have additional room in there for your sleeping bag and even some sleeping clothes. I get my sleeping clothes and a sleeping pillow and I like to have an eye bag too. You know, I put all that stuff inside this, roll it tight. It's waterproof. It's, I chose this particular bag for this kit because it will withstand um, minor submersion. So it can be good for kayaking, canoeing. Uh, I strap it onto the back of the motorcycle. It's out in the elements and under storms. It keeps everything dry. And it's just, it's a, it's a wonderful piece of kit just to keep everything all included. Yeah, in it's addition not just to a dry bag, bag, but it's a dry bag backpack. It's a right. solid built piece of gear. And you're right, everything is so compact in there with enough room to spare. And what I found is because it is waterproof um, and submersible, like you can throw it anywhere, but from the actual use of it, it becomes a part of my camping experience. So once the kit, or the, the hammock camp is set, the bag is empty. And I typically like to sleep less, less clothes than normal. So um, at night, you don't want to leave your clothes out because you'll get dew and moisture or bugs or stuff. So I found it a really convenient way when, when I'm getting ready for camp, I'll strip down my shorts and I put all my clothes right back in the bag, roll it up and leave it on the ground there. So when I wake up, my clothes are dry, secure and bug free. And they're they're not cool, as cool from the night because the bag acts, actually insulates it. So I love the fact that it's actually an extension of the camping uh, process for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, that's awesome. I mean, that's a great use scenario right there. Yep, the bag is, is you have all that extra space. You can pull whatever you want into it, when it once your camp is all set up. Yep, you can set it on the ground. You can clip it onto uh, the suspension. Uh, some people like to keep it underneath the shelter uh, attached right there to, not to the ridge line, but right where the carabiners attached to the suspension. That's a good option too. You've got, you can do whatever you want with it. 
It is wonderful. Now, in addition to the bag, the adventure kit also comes with a uh, separate set of ground anchors. So the, the hammock kit, the shelter comes with uh, these really high quality uh, uh, triple finned aluminum stakes, which are nice and light. They're good and stiff. They drive into the ground relatively easily. Um, but the adventure kit comes with a spiral ground stake that offers just a little bit more bite in some of those more sandy type environments you know, where you just need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that really opens up kind of all terrains. Yeah. And the thing I've noticed, I really, I really love those tri-fin aluminum stakes, but you probably really do need a hammer or some sort of tool. I've tried them with, with rocks and that works, but there is the chance you can damage them. With those ground spikes, they can go into anything and you don't need to carry any tools and they're just as light. So it, it is neat how... You have some versatility with that. So I'll, I, I have mine in two small different bags and it depends on which camping environment that I'm going with. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a great description. And, and if you can't tell from the excitement in my voice, this literally has changed my life in camping. It, it's fantastic. You got to check it out. Now, Shane, um, there's some exciting things coming up. So where is uh, Journeyman Hammocks right now? What's coming up? What do you look forward to in the next year? Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking forward to the launch of a new website here coming up soon. That's going to be really great. Um, we're going to do some, be doing some blogging and uh, we're going to be compiling, compiling some resources to help people uh, really get the most out of their camping experience, especially when it comes to hammock camping. Uh, we'll be putting those resources together in a newsletter that'll be coming out. Uh, you know, sign up for that. We're going to be trying to get out to events this year. You know, last year, the events were pretty few and far between. So uh, this year, we're going to uh, be doing a lot more, hopefully. Hopefully, things open up in a, you know, a little bit more so that we can get out there and, and really talk to people. Because that is, that is a big component of it, is, is meeting people, going to these events, talking to them through, you know, that education component is really important. And I think, just like you, you had said, Josh, for, for a lot of people, you know, seeing and trying is really believing. So yeah. that's where we're looking forward to getting out and getting some more adventures on the road here this this spring, summer, and fall. Well, I'm excited for you to get out there. I, I'm excited to see your website uh, simply because I'm working on it and Shane's partner, Kim, is working on it. Kim and I have been working together uh, at Great Things and she is an absolute incredible talent from writing, copywriting, graphic design, marketing, and just about anything else she puts her mind to. Uh, one of my favorite people. So I love these two together. But uh, Shane, do you want to talk a little bit because uh, this system is is robust. It is durable. It is all the outdoors things, but it is not uncomfortable. You had a lot of feedback and input through this uh, from from women in the circle and in the community that uh, contributed or what have been some of the feedback from from the fairer sex in their experience with it. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, uh, women have been involved in the development of this of this uh, product for uh, since almost the beginning, right? Um, actually, some of the first pe the first people who asked me about the hammock while I was traveling were women, and as it turns out, it's the comfort aspect of it is really important to them. Um, not just from a standpoint of the the hammock bed being comfortable, but also the fact that they're up off the ground. They don't have to worry about bugs. They don't have to worry about the dirt. They don't have to worry that if it rains that they're going to wake up in the middle of a puddle, right? Um, they're going to stay high and dry and comfy. But in addition to that, the temperature regulation is really uh, fascinating and important for women too, where you know, some women like end up sleeping really, really warm. And so they are able to adjust that much more easily by being up off the ground. Another aspect that women really like about it is the ability to close in the ends of the shelter to create, you know, to use those doors in order to create that level of privacy too. Great. So uh, we'll be on the lookout. Uh, the website should be up in soft launch here pretty soon. And I know you're hitting the road. So uh, for those of you out there, check out uh, the website. It'll be enclosed in the description. Uh, keep an eye out for Shane and his travels. Uh, Shane, any last words uh, before we go here? I encourage everybody to get up off the ground. Okay. And it's just, it's just better. It's better up here. Yeah, it is better. I mean, 
there's nothing more to say. It is the greatest, um, <laughs> greatest camping uh, discovery I have made in a long time. So uh, Shane, uh, thanks for being on. I look forward to seeing you again here soon, my friend. And uh, hopefully this year, uh, you might see Shane and I doing some shots from the road on our motorcycle. So I did get a motorcycle and have been inspired by Shane. So I'm going to travel with the expert rather than learn the lessons myself. <laughs> awesome. So looking forward to it. Thanks, Josh. This has been a lot of fun and uh, looking forward to next time we can get together and, uh, and toss a couple back and chew the fat. We'll do that. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button right now. Stay tuned and check out the channel for other interesting and informative videos.